If you're a rental property owner, chances are you already know this, but just in case you don't, you should really be using some kind of software to manage your rental property portfolio. I mean like uh, processing applications, listing your properties for rent, collecting payments, doing background and credit checks. It's a lot of work to keep track of all these things, especially if you've got like hard copies of stuff or if you're trying to shove it all in your email inbox. It can just be an organizational nightmare if you don't have some system to rein this stuff in and just keep things on track. And the good news is there's lots of really good options out there right now. Some of them are arguably very good, but the thing is they don't all do the same thing. Some of them are designed to just do like two or three really basic things, like pull background checks, credit reports, and take payments and like, that's kind of where it stops. And they are free, but again, they just don't do that much. Others are also free and they do have paid plans and they do a lot of stuff, like arguably almost everything that you would ever want to do. In this video, I wanna tell you about one of those options. It's called Tenant Cloud. And this is a sponsored video for Tenant Cloud. They gave me access to the system so I could look at everything and see how it works. And I just wanna show you how this system works. If this is the system for you, you can kinda of get a feel for how capable it is, how easy it is to figure out. And uh, I'm really just gonna give you the full tour and show you what you can expect if you decide to work with this one. Like I said, Tenant Cloud, it does have a free plan where you can get access to pretty much all the basic stuff you'd ever need and not pay a cent for it. But if you are like a professional property manager, or if you have like dozens of properties you're trying to manage with lots of tenants and lots of moving pieces, they do have paid plans as well that are honestly like really cheap. So it's a pretty good deal. But in this video, I'm just gonna give you the walkthrough on this website and there's like a ton of stuff to cover. So we're not gonna cover everything, but we're gonna cover most of the basic functionality that most people would want to know about. And I'm gonna include a table of contents beneath this video with timestamps. So if you want to, you can skip around to the different things that you are most interested in. We also do have an affiliate link with Tenant Cloud, retipsyourcom forward slash Tenant Cloud if you wanna try it out. Again, it doesn't cost anything to get started and a lot of people don't pay anything for it. In terms of like credit reports and background checks and when things do cost money, you can pass those costs on to your tenants to pay for that stuff. So it never really costs the landlord or the property manager anything if you stick with that free plan. There are some very minor limitations with the free plan, but uh, a lot of people really can get by with it. So I'm gonna jump into the software right now and you can follow along. And again, if you wanna jump around, just refer to the table of contents beneath this video. And at the end of this video, I'm just gonna give you my final take on what I like about Tenant Cloud, what I don't like about it, and who I think this is and isn't for. So be sure to stick around for that as well. All right, so once you sign into your Tenant Cloud account, this is what your dashboard looks like. Just gives you a quick view of some of the most important activity that most people are gonna care about, including this little historical wave chart of their financial performance, uh, last 30 days, rental applications and status, and calendar, things like that. So probably the easiest way to go through this is to follow the chronological order that a landlord or a property manager would go through when they're setting up a new property listing and then finding a tenant and then getting an application and then screening them and then getting leases signed and starting to collect payments and so on. So I'm gonna start just by showing you how you can create a listing and then what those listings look like. So if we go over here to the sidebar, and by the way, everything I'm gonna show you here can also be done on the mobile app. This whole site is made to be very mobile friendly. So anything I'm doing here, you should be able to also do on the mobile app. So you don't necessarily need to be in front of your desktop or laptop to uh, handle things. But uh, we go over here to properties and uh, we can go ahead and see all of the current properties in our inventory. And if we wanted to add a new one, we could do it right here. Just click that button, type on a name, year built, address, city, all the standard stuff that you would normally have to fill out whenever you're creating a property listing pretty much anywhere. You can also put in the currency. This is the US dollar because most people using this are in the US, but this doesn't have to be just for US properties. There's a lot of people in other countries around the world who use this as well. You can upload a bunch of pictures here and include a lot of different property features and any relevant documents you can include here as well. But uh, let's just take a look at what one of these completed property listings might look like. So I'm gonna bring over this example here. So Every single tenant cloud user gets a free listing website. And this is just one example of what that looks like here. These are fictitious listings, so these aren't real, but just kind of gives you an idea for what these things look like. And as you can see, they look really good. And I think this is a huge perk for any property manager or self-managing landlord because 
I know like when I first started my first real estate business and I built my first website, I paid 1500 bucks for somebody to make the thing for me. It wasn't even that functional or useful and it was really hard to manage. And even if you want to start your own WordPress website or Squarespace website today, it might not even be that hard per se, but it's still an additional cost and an additional thing you have to worry about. But with Tenant Cloud, it's just built into the system. It doesn't cost you anything and it looks really good and it is very functional. I'll go ahead and click on one of these listings right here. And also one really important thing about these listings is that it's not just limited to this one website of yours. It syndicates with a lot of other huge real estate listing websites like Zillow, Apartments.com, Realtor.com. And if you have one of the paid subscriptions with Tenant Cloud, it can also syndicate with this website, Rentler, which is a sister company of Tenant Cloud. And the way this works is that basically a tenant can create their own profile and create sort of like a wish list for what they want their property property to be like the size and location and price and all this stuff. And then when a landlord creates their own listing and it goes on here, it sort of matches up the tenants and the landlord so that they're aware of each other and they could say, oh, look, there's a property that meets my specifications or, oh, look, there's a tenant who wants what I have. It's just a really good way to help connect tenants and landlords. And if you have one of the paid plans with Tenant Cloud, you get access to this for free. Again, you don't necessarily need this, but if you wanted that, one of those paid plans would do it for you. Otherwise, the free plans still do syndicate to those other big websites like apartments.com. So it can really get you a lot of exposure pretty easily just by having this listing and making it go public. And in terms of what the listing itself looks like on the tenant cloud platform, so you can just see what this thing looks like. This is obviously all mobile friendly, so it's going to look great on a mobile device as well. It's got the description, it's got all of the key details, the pricing, features, amenities, map, lease terms, all this stuff. And that person can send a message through the listing, they can schedule a tour, and if you want to, you don't have to do this, but if you want to make this available, they can actually apply to be a renter right through your listing. They just click on this and they'll be prompted to sign up and create their own account. And then once they do that, they will fill out the application that you set up. And then once that comes through, you'll be able to see it on your end in your own dashboard as the property manager. And then over here on the property manager or landlord's view, they can go over here to the sidebar again and click on applications and they can see these new applications that are coming in and for which properties they're coming in on. And they can then view that tenant's information. And from there, they can request a screening report right here. And when you request a screening report from a potential tenant, you can either order just a background check or just a credit check or a full check, which is both. You know, in my case, I mean, I would usually be just be doing a full check and it's not that much more expensive just to do it all. And you can set this up so that either the applicant pays for it. So it effectively costs the landlord nothing. The service is still completely free if you're on a free plan or you can pay for it yourself if you want to. It's kind of up to you on how you would do that. Uh, most landlords I know would have the applicant pay for it. So that's what I'm going to click here. And you would just put in that person's information and their phone number and their address and then continue. And then down here, you would have that person's first and last name and put their email address and then check this box and then click to send the request. In most cases, they're going to get that request in their email inbox almost instantaneously. And it's just a simple email notifying them of the request. And then they can fill out their information, their social security number and pay for it. And then once it comes back, it's going to show up right back here in that applicant's profile right in this section and you can review that and make a decision on whether or not this is going to work for you and once you decide that you're comfortable with renting to this applicant you can go up here and click on actions and basically just click approve application or if you're still in the process of reviewing it you could click that and then they would be notified hey we got it and it's under review or you could just say no thanks and decline it and then they would also be notified of that if you wanted to export it or print it for some reason you could do that and actually speaking of applications I'm getting a little ahead of myself here before before a person goes and clicks on your listing to apply or before they go through that whole process and you order the background check and credit report and all of that, before any of that happens, you got to make sure your application is ready to go. And you can do that over here. Go ahead and click on applications. And if you're a brand new user of this service, you're not going to see any of this stuff here. It's just going to be totally blank. And what you can do is click on add application. 
And the reason this is important is because different states have different rules about like what you can ask and if you can charge an application fee and different things like that. And you might even have specific things that you want to ask about or require or prohibit or anything like that. Like, for example, you can ask whether or not a person is going to have pets living with them or just prohibit pets, things like that. And you can see all of that information when you scroll through here. And by default, it's going to be set up in just the standard way, but you can add things to this. You can remove things to this. You can require more references. You can really do a lot and it's very, very flexible. And once you have everything set up the way that you want it to be, you just go ahead and click create and then it will be ready to go. And assuming you do already have that application ready to go, like I showed you earlier, one way that a person can start applying is to click on it through your listing. But what if you just happen to be like talking to somebody on the phone or you are giving them a tour of the property and you want to invite them to apply right there on the spot? Well, what you can do is pull out the mobile app or just go to the website on your phone. Or if you're in front of your computer like I am right here, you just click this invite to apply button and you can select the property and you can put in that applicant's email address, send the invitation, and then they're going to get an email where they can go ahead and start applying right there. And again, once a person has filled out that application, you're going to have all their information right here in their profile. We can approve them just like this, and then that will change their status. And when it's time to have them sign the lease, you would go up here to this little gear icon for settings, and then go over to document templates. And if you don't have any templates in here yet, all you'd have to do is click on create a template and you can either copy and paste the text, say if you have it in the form of a Word document or something like that, or you can upload the PDF. Say if there's some like state specific form that you're using, you could do it that way as well. And just to show you an example of what each one of those things would look like. So right here, this is what it would look like if you were to upload a PDF. And this works very much like any digital signature service would, where where you can insert fields where the person can sign their initials. You can insert what are basically like merge fields that change and update the dates, or you can change the amount that get put in each one of these little lines. You can also put their signature thing down here, and then you can use this to email to your applicant so they can sign this thing and move on to the next step. Likewise, if you did have one where you were just putting in the text by itself, it works a little bit different where you would go in here and this is like an incomplete version of what that looks like, but you could go in here and just paste whatever text you want, or you could even type it out if you wanted to. And then anytime you want to insert a date field, you could just do that right here and it would put it right there. And you can specify whether this field is for the tenant or the landlord or the property manager. Same thing with like just a random text box or initials or signature, all that stuff. So again, this is a totally incomplete version, but you kind of get the idea on how this works. It's a pretty uh, familiar looking text editor. And the nice thing is that uh, once it's all set and good to go, you don't really ever have to mess with this again unless you want to like substantially change what your lease document says. You can also use this for like tenant notices or anything that's going to require a digital signature, assuming digital signatures are allowed on everything in your state. So that's where you can uh, manage all of that stuff. You can also come down here to the marketing tab. So once your unit is off the market, you can come down here and just say, hey, let's unlist this unit. It doesn't need to be out there anymore. So you can keep that updated. You can also get in here and change anything you want at any point. So if we go back here to the applications and we filter this by only the people who have been approved, we can see the person we just approved right here. And the next step in this process is to move in the applicant. And once we do that, we can send them the lease agreement that we just set up and we can specify the property address and the type of lease and the start and end date and all that stuff, which is going to go into those merge fields that we set up and then lease transactions. So this is where we set the rent amount and we can also add a deposit amount if we want to do that here, which most people will do. Let's just do the same thing as the first month's rent. We can set the invoice date and then go on for the next step here and then extra fees and utilities. So if the person is going to be paying any extra fees or utilities, we could specify that here, who's paying for what. And then we can also set up the email notifications so that both the property manager and or the tenant will be notified when certain things happen, like when an invoice is posted, when an invoice is due, when an invoice is overdue, or when the lease is expired. So you could obviously set all these on for everybody or just certain people. 
It's up to you, however you want to handle that. Then let's go ahead and do the next step here. So if you are requiring tenants to purchase renter's insurance, you can specify all that information here, what type of insurance uh, and all that. Go ahead and do the next step. And then in the final step here, we'd get everybody's signatures. So if the tenant hasn't already entered in their credit card digits to pay for the application fee, if you did require an application fee, they would then be required to do that. And they can use the same card that they use for the application fee to pay their rent, or they can set up a new card. And that is one of the differentiators between the free plan and the paid plans. If you're using the free plan, you are limited to only collecting rent payments via credit card, which basically means there's going to be some fees taken out of the rent payments. Nothing huge, but you know, you're not going to get the full amount. Once you use one of the paid plans, you can use ACH payments, which means you're going to get the full amount with no fees taken out. So just be aware uh, that's something you can do if that matters to you, or you could just increase the price of the rent to cover the cost of those credit card fees. So that's how you go ahead and onboard that tenant and get them fully in your system. And then uh, something else that's pretty unique to Tenant Cloud and pretty helpful is the messaging capability. And there's a few reasons why this is important and useful. So a lot of people who are using other property management software or no software at all, the way that they have to communicate with their tenants is either through email or text messaging or phone calls. And none of those options are really that secure or well organized. And the nice thing about TC Messenger is that everything is very secure. So you can send things like social security numbers or eviction notices or balances due, that kind of stuff through this messaging app. And what goes in TC Messenger stays in TC Messenger. It also just helps keep your inbox and text message feed uncluttered because everything is tied to a specific person in this app, which is part of your property management software. So when you log into this, everything is in one place. You can also send documents back and forth this way. And again, it's going to stay secure, unlike it would be in your email inbox if you ever got hacked. So TC Messenger is just a really useful thing for both the tenant and for the landlord and for the property manager and for the maintenance technicians and really everybody who touches your property. And this does come with the free plan and the paid plan alike. And it also works very well with the Tenant Cloud mobile app. So you don't have to be on your desktop to do this. You can do it from your phone as if you were texting, but you're not texting because it's going through the Tenant Cloud app. And another super useful thing about Tenant Cloud is the maintenance tracking functionality. As any landlord or property manager can tell you, maintenance tracking is just a huge ongoing thing that everybody has to worry about. Say if you've got an air conditioner that keeps breaking or a fridge that keeps breaking or a leaking roof or you name it, there's tons of stuff that can and will fall apart in every rental property. And this provides you a really easy way to keep track of that stuff. And as you can see, it looks a lot like a Trello board does. It's like a Kanban board where you can take stuff and move it around once it's complete or once it's in progress and you can say when it's complete and how many hours and dollars were spent on it. So you can keep track of how much that broken thing is costing you over time, which also helps you understand, oh, maybe I should just replace the thing instead of continually trying to fix it. And I'll just show you how this works. So if we were going to create a basic request, we can specify what it's about. So let's just say this is about a refrigerator. So we'll click on that and we can specify what exactly is wrong. And as we're going through this, you can see what I mean. Like it's really kind of idiot proof. It's really hard to get lost or confused about what you're supposed to do. You just follow the prompts and then make it super simple. And you just specify what the issue is. You can upload images of the issue. You can even take a 15 second video and upload that. And that's also going to stay with the card so that you and your maintenance technician and your tenant can all very clearly see the status of the issue and what's wrong. So there's no confusion about that. And you can go ahead and describe the issue in as much detail as you want. Well, I guess up until a thousand characters and we'll go ahead and click continue. And then we can select which property it's for. So we can just do that. Continue again. We can say the level of priority if this is something where like people are going to die if it's not fixed in the next 24 hours or you can just sort of get to this whenever. It's up to you. And then we'll create that request and we can see it right here. And I didn't upload images or videos, but if I had, that stuff would be visible here. And another cool thing is once the maintenance technician has done their thing, they can also take another 15 second video and or updated pictures and they can upload it to this as well so that you can then see what they did and how it's different and how it's better and improved. So there's no confusion about what happened, if anything. It's not like the maintenance technician can say, yeah, I fixed 
fixed it when they didn't actually touch anything. It just helps eliminate a lot of confusion and communication issues that typically come up when this type of maintenance tracking system isn't available. So this is a huge value add to the tenant cloud system. So now that we've taken a look at that, I want to show you another thing here. And this is available on the growth plan. So this is ideal for like a super property manager who has lots of properties, lots of different property owners and tenants that they deal with. If that's who you are, you probably already know that it's pretty common that property owners want ongoing constant communication with you about like rent rolls, maintenance issues and revenue reports and all kinds of updates about what's going on with their properties just to make sure everything's okay. And normally that's a huge pain, but with Tenant Cloud, if you're keeping track of everything in this system as you should be, if you're using it, it makes it super simple to create all these reports. Like for example, the rent roll, I can go ahead and click on this. I can specify which properties I want to see this for and go ahead and just preview this stuff. And it'll show me straight up what that rent roll is. Or say if I'm trying to sell a property and the buyer wants to see a rent roll, I, I could do that here as well. And this is just one example of many different types of reports you can pull for this. Another one is like tax preparation. I mean, at tax time, it can be such a time suck to give your accountant what they need so that they can prepare your Schedule E for your tax return. But again, Tenant Cloud has you covered right here. Once you click on this and specify the date range, whatever that is, usually it's going to be the previous calendar year from like January through December. And then you can select what data you want to have included, whether it's a specific property and who the owner needs to be and that kind of thing. And you can specify whether you want it reported as cash or accrual. And then if you want it to be reported for the Schedule E and you can download it just like this in either an Excel sheet or a PDF. So we will try the PDF version and we'll see how that looks. We just got to wait for this thing to generate and it actually comes through as a full folder. We can click through this and see all these different reports. You can kind of get a feel for what those look like and you can see how that looks. And this is all the information that your accountant is going to need. This is just an example property. So a lot of these numbers haven't been filled in, but assuming you're actually using tenant cloud for your account on these properties, it should all be there. And it'll save you a ton of time if you're just doing it the right way. And also speaking of which, depending on what kind of accounting software you're already using and what you're using it for, say if you're somebody who only uses it for your rental properties. Like there are no other businesses or activity that you need to track outside of the performance of your rentals. You could potentially even get rid of your QuickBooks subscription or whatever other software you're using because you can do it all in Tenant Cloud. And you can control all that stuff right over here in the accounting section where you can see transactions and balances and management tools and recurring payments and costs and that kinds of thing. You can see all the information right here because remember you're collecting your rental payments through tenant cloud so it's going to be automatically reported here and if you have any payments that you have to make outside of this you can just manually report it so you can really use tenant cloud as your full accounting system for your rental properties and if you do it that way it's going to save you a ton of time when it comes time to pull these reports for anybody who wants to see them whether it's your accountant or property owners you're working with or a partner or you name it and if we head back to the reports section, you can see there's a lot of other types of reports you can generate depending on what you need it for and if you need it at all. And uh, another thing that uh, I know this doesn't apply to everybody, but say if you are a property manager and you have a whole team of other people that you're working with, like employees who do different things, you are able to manage a lot of that stuff up here in terms of like team roles and permissions and what they can and can't see all in this section right here. You can also manage like keys and locks and files and the list just goes on and on. So there's a ton of stuff here. It's really too much for me to cover in a single video, but hopefully this just gives you a really good overview of how powerful it can be if you decide to use its full functionality. All right, folks, so what's the verdict? We've been through most of the stuff that Tenant Cloud can do. You've kind of seen how it works and how to navigate around. So what do I like about it and what do I not like about it? Well, I think uh, the ability to do so many things in one platform without having to rely on several other different softwares and websites and all this stuff, just being able to keep it all centralized in one spot, one app, one website with one login is a pretty huge deal. I mean, I mean that can really simplify a lot of things for most landlords and property managers. 
And the fact that, you know, you can do it all pretty much for free and the few things that aren't free, I mean, they're definitely nice, but it's not like you can't get by without those things. And if I had to have any like gripes or complaints or things that I didn't like about Tenant Cloud, honestly, the only thing that I can really think of is just because you can do so much with it and because there's so many different areas you need to like learn and discover and figure out how it all works together, it adds a little bit to the learning curve and just the level of complexity and things that you have to figure out more time and more mental energy but it's one of those things that you can't really get away from I mean if you want easy you can get easy but you're also not gonna have nearly as much functionality I don't know why this is the best analogy I can think of but when I think of like a video game controller again I'm not even like a video game nerd but I used to play the regular Nintendo way back in the late 80s when I was like five and six years old. And when you look at the original video game controller for the Nintendo Entertainment System, it was super simple, not that many buttons, not a whole lot of opportunity to get confused because there just wasn't that much to it. And you also couldn't really do a whole lot with it. It was just a very basic controller. And that's fine if all you want is basic and if you don't want all these extra features. But once you graduate to a more complicated, complex, and capable system like an advanced video game system or in this case an advanced property management software there's just more stuff you have to process and register and understand when you're looking at the controls you have to figure out oh, okay so this button does that oh i didn't know i could do that too oh and this can do that as well and it's really cool but guess what it's going to take a little bit more energy and time and just figuring things out it's kind of like burning a few more mental calories up front but the good news is once you know it, you know it. It's kind of like learning how to ride a bike. It's not like you have to go through this every single day. It's just the first time you log into it, you sort of have to figure out the lay of the land. And hopefully if you watched any part of this video, maybe I helped you with that a little bit. Um, but again, uh, if you just skipped right to the end to see my thoughts, just know that this is gonna be a little bit more complicated. It's not the end of the world, but that's just something you'll want to be ready for when you jump in. So. Again, I hope this was helpful. If you guys wanted to go check it out, we have an affiliate link, retipster.com forward slash tenant cloud. And uh, I hope you find it useful if you decide to use it. And if you decide to use something else entirely, I wish you all the best with that too. So thanks again. Talk to you next time.